Well, I'm going to um, start the session and um, just welcome everybody. Um, my name is Simon Duffy. I'm from the Centre for Welfare Reform and Citizen Network, which is based in Sheffield, England. And this webinar is part of a series called Day Centres Without Walls, which is a European project funded by the Erasmus Plus programme. And it's about sharing good practices and thinking about future innovations to support inclusion and peer support for people with uh, disabilities so that they can be full citizens. And so we're really excited to have the presentation today about uh, playing together, unified play, and to listen to the experiences um, from Greece, um, from Alex and Tobias around the the practice that, practices that have emerged around Special Olympics. Just to remind everybody, this is a recorded webinar, um, so please just bear that in mind. This will be put up on the internet um, a few days later after we've tidied it up, they edited, cut off the beginning bit and uh, played around with it. Um, and um, if you, we'll have chance for questions at the end, but if you, want to put questions in at the chat bar at the side, then please do. Please uh, mute yourself, um, or, and if you don't, I might mute you, um, uh, if, when you're not talking. And um, when, when Alex and Tobias have finished, then we'll, I'll facilitate some discussion about what we've heard. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to really welcome Alex to start us off, kick us off, introduce us, the, the ideas and the work that's been going on. Alex, over to you. Hi everyone, Simon, thank you for your introduction and thank you for today. I'm about to explain to you how this fascinating project called uh, Play Unified, Learn Unified can be a life changer, not just for people with intellectual disabilities, but for everyone involved, uh, including myself. The um, Special Olympics may be a movement that does not need an introduction, but I will show you a short video, one of my favorites, uh, which underlines in just a few seconds the essence of sport for people with uh, intellectual disabilities. So let me share my screen. Okay. Here you go. You're on. Can you see? People look at you. They stare. They all stare. They point at you. They shout things. They make you feel different. It's fantastic. Yeah, I always get the, the goosebumps when I see this video, I really like it. Um, the Special Olympics is to provide year training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, giving them continuing opportunities to develop physical fit for courage, experience joy and participate in the sharing of gifts skills and friendship with the families, other Special Olympic athletes, and the community. One community that is of particular importance for Special Olympics is the school, and that is where the, this amazing project of Unified Schools comes in. In 2019, almost three years ago, the Stavros Niakos Foundation in Greece announced a major three-year collaboration with Special Olympics to support significant international expansion of Special Olympics Unified Schools and Unified Sport Work. Unified Sports and Unified Schools programming creates opportunities for inclusive sport and youth leadership development for students with and without intellectual disabilities. The project focuses on harnessing the power of school-based programming in 14 countries. Over the first year of the SNF supported expansion of the program, more than 10,000 athletes of all abilities have taken part in unified play, 
Many hundreds of unified sport coaches have been trained and hundreds of schools have joined the unified movement. To make it a bit clearer, the concept behind the Special Olympics unified sport is that people with intellectual disabilities called athletes and without intellectual disabilities called partners play together on the same team. And that makes unified sports a quick path to friendship and social inclusion. There are three basic models of Special Olympics unified sports. All models are equally driven by fun, development of new skills and talents supported by positive attitudes, community activation and engagement. If you have any questions in between, you can stop me. Um, there is the unified sports competitive model, which combines approximately equal number of athletes and partners as teammates for training and competition. Uh, they must be of similar age and ability. Unified athletes compete without modification of the current Special Olympics official sport rules. Then there is the unified sports player development model, which combines as well approximately equal number uh, of athletes and partners as teammates for training and competition. In unified sports player development, players are not required to be of similar abilities. Players of higher ability will assist players of lower ability in developing sport-specific skills and tactics and in successfully participating in a team environment. This model allows for modifications to the Special Olympic official sport rules, but must maintain similar ages among teammates. Then finally, we have the Unified Sports Recreational Model, which is an inclusive recreation sports event. It's like come and try event for training and competition for athletes and partners. Unified sports recreation allows modification to the Special Olympic uh, official sport rules and is driven by fun. Looking at the implementation of unified sports within schools, it is up to each school to choose which model or combination of models will be most beneficial for the students and feasible to implement. In Greece, uh, since we have a segregated uh, school system, we mainly use the last two models the development and the recreational model, because it was easier to introduce Special Olympics and to connect students with and without intellectual disabilities uh, to unified sports by a fan-driven event. So the goals of um, unified sports are mainly friendship and social participation, because unified sports provides a platform for positive social interaction between teammates and often leads to a long lasting relationship. Then there is meaningful inclusion. Players have a meaningful and valuable role on the team. Uh, a goal is also to develop sports skills. Uh, players develop these skills um, and enable them to compete with greater competence and develop physical fitness. And finally, uh, competition experience. They get the opportunity to compete more often. So as mentioned before, the Play Unified Learn Unified project is part of a landmark collaboration between Special Olympics and the Stavros Niakos Foundation to support stronger youth engagement worldwide and to transform educational systems through inclusive sport. The elegantly simple combination of the goal of a world where all are included with the idea that sport can seed inclusion has made an impact on millions around the world, not only the 5 million Special Olympic athletes in the 170 countries, but on their families, communities, and networks as well. Unfortunately, during the last year of the project and due to the pandemic, we were not able to organize any unified in-person sport events, nor were we able to up to date, to date, to today, to identify new unified schools in Greece. We try to keep the schools engaged and the students connected by digital events, which is not the same, but still they try, they're, they're still active. We are truly hoping for the continuation of our project so that we can build stronger relationships and connections with the school's community and further promote social inclusion through sport. So I'm now going to show you a three minute long video filmed in Greece, which I'm very proud of. Uh, for the Play Unified project in order to give you a better picture on what has happened. So give me just a second to share my screen again. Am I doing it? Okay. Uh -huh. Share. 
Είμαι ο Δό Ιωάννη Δημητρά και είμαι αθλητή στο Special Olympics στο άθλημα του Στίβου. Στο σχολείο ξεκίνησα στο δημόσιο νέο Φαλήρου και συνέχισα το γυμνάσιο στο ειδικό σχολείο των Καμινίων. Τελειώσαμε επιτυχία τη φίτησή μου στο επάλτη Βιτανιδίου στο τμήμα Ιαπωνία. Αυτή τη στιγμή σπουδάζω στο 6 Βιτανιδίου στο τμήμα Μαγειρική Τέχνη. Σαν μαθητή έχω μαθησιακέ δυσκολίε, αλλά έχω τη στήριξη για την αγάπη των σπαθών και των καθηγητών μου. Είμαι ο Γιώργο Κογκαλίδη, μαθητή ηλικίου. Είχα δει το δρόμο στι αθλητικέ δράσει των Special Olympics στο σχολείο μου αλλά και εκτό. Και ήταν εντυπωσιακά καλό. Με τον Γιώργο προπονούμαστε μαζί τα τελευταία δύο χρόνια. Οι κοινέ μα προπονήσει βελτιώσαν τι επιδόσει μου. Πάμε σε αθλητικέ δράσει και σε άλλα σχολεία συζητάμε για τα Special Olympics και για το άθλημά μα. Περνάμε πολλέ ώρε μαζί, κάνουμε πλάκε και προπονούμε στην παρέα. Έχει πολύ χιούμορ και με κάνει να θέλω να προσπαθήσω περισσότερο. Ο Γιώργο είναι φίλο μου, κάτι σαν αδελφό μου. Η ζωή μου έχει αλλάξει προ το καλύτερο μέσα από τι κοινέ μα προπονήσει και του αγώνε μα. Έχω κάνει καινούριου φίλου και έχω χτίσει μεγαλύτερη σιγουριά για τον εαυτό μου. Είναι όμορφο αυτό που γίνεται τώρα στα σχολεία. Μακάρι και άλλοι μαθητές να έχουν την ευκαιρία να έρθουν σε επαφή με άτομα σαν το δρόσι. The focus tends to be on connecting students from special and mainstream schools that are coexisting in the same local community. This can happen within the usual school hours, but also outside the school framework. Research conducted in Greece, but also worldwide, has shown that schools engaged in unified sports report significant benefit for the entire school community, for those involved or not involved directly uh, with unified sports. There is a more welcoming school climate that is free from bullying, combats stereotypes and negative attitudes, eliminates hurtful language, promotes healthy activity and interactions, and welcomes and values the engagement of all students with and without intellectual disability. So what is a unified school? A unified school is a school that offers or participates in unified sport activities in any of the three unified sport models mentioned before, at least twice per calendar year. There's been a modification now with the pandemic. We can actually 
do the, these activities also virtually and not only in person, which helps. So, uh, it can be applied in various educational systems, special education combined with mainstream schools or in inclusive schools. Unified sports can take place within the formal physical education framework or as an informal activity initiated by the school outside regular lessons. In Greece, we have currently 92 unified schools uh, spread around 15 regions of the country. Unified sports provides a valuable social opportunity, social inclusion opportunities. By bringing students from special mainstream or inclusive schools together on the playing field on a regular basis, all teammates are challenged to improve their sports skills and fitness. In the process, young people with and without intellectual disabilities increase their positive attitudes, perception towards their peers, um, take action for inclusion and establishing friendships. There is a selection of typical team and double sports in the school setting. It can be basketball, football, handball, volleyball, uh, athletics, badminton, boccia, bowling, table tennis, tennis, there are loads to choose from. And uh, as seen from the video before, apart from unified sports, uh, through this project we have had the chance to present Special Olympics and intellectual disability features uh, via presentations, workshops and trainings to students, teachers, parents and the whole local community, which was uh, great to spread the word of inclusion. Um, unified schools and their students have also had the opportunity to participate, apart from the unified sport events, in inclusive youth leadership activities in their school. The inclusive youth leadership activities, uh, the component of it, creates opportunity for students with and without intellectual disability to advance social inclusion in the school or university. The benefits and focus of youth leadership are no different than those of developing of developing leadership in adults. Yeah. Inclusive youth leadership means that young people with and without intellectual disability are working in inclusive teams, taking on responsibility together in promoting inclusion on and off the playing field in schools, clubs and local communities. The inclusive teamwork allows a first-hand true inclusion experience and makes the team members more knowledgeable and credible to advocate for inclusion. The diversity in the team gives new opportunity for empowerment and growth as human beings and as leaders. So now I have the pleasure to have joining us today, joining me especially, my dear colleague, he's actually my boss, uh, Tobias Bergler. Uh, he is the regional manager of the Special Olympics Play Unified Learning Unified uh, program for Europe and Eurasia. He's also uh, the youth engagement manager and has also been an active youth leader, once a student, if I remember correctly, he'll tell you all about it. So before I pass it on to Toby, who is going to talk to you about unified sports in Europe and what is going on at the moment, I'd like to highlight the most important facts of this project. In the Play Unified Learn Unified project, people with and without intellectual disabilities have the opportunity to enjoy and appreciate each other's gifts, both on and off the playing field. The Play Unified Learn Unified project focuses on creating schools and communities of inclusion. And finally, the Play Unified Learn Unified project is a quick path to understanding, acceptance and friendship breaking down the barriers that exist for people with intellectual disabilities. Thank you. Elby, your turn. Ευχαριστώ, uh, Alexandra. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for having me today and also the invitation to Simon at the Center of Welfare Reform. Um, we are really appreciating the, the, this event and this webinar to be here. And uh, um, Alexandra couldn't have been put it better. It's a really great project and really important one for such an upcoming generation and we, we would like to really foster around inclusion. And so um, we are really happy with, with uh, the Stavros Niakos Foundation supporting us on this initiative and having such a dedicated 
project leaders like Alexandra and also in, in Russia and Serbia, where we are also conducting this project. But um, to give everyone a bit broader scope, I would like to uh, open up um, the, the scope um, and the information um, of Special Olympics Europe or Asia and our work. We are operating generally Special Olympics operates in uh, 100, over 170 countries across the globe. And um, we have seven or uh, six regions and one of this is Special Olympics Europe or Asia. And um, this is um, a quick overview uh, on the REACH, um, what we have achieved in 2019. Um, so we have actually over 580,000 total participants with and without intellectual disabilities. You see the breakdown in the graphic below. Uh, and I want to draw more highlights on our unified sports numbers, which you can find here. Which, uh, in which we have over 26,000 youth unified athletes. We call these uh, people with intellectual disabilities and our unified partners are those ones who uh, have not uh, intellectual disability. And here we are having right now 21,000 across uh, Europe, Eurasia, engaging in any sports activity as um, Alexandra already described. In a fun way, recreational model, more a come and try and to get active uh, model, but then also to really develop the skills and also to go finally to competition on local, national and regional and international level. And just to go on the right side of the corner you see, uh, of the graphic, you will see as well three different other components where we are actually working with and in and it's one part is the health initiatives where we are screening athletes um, giving them different um, screenings on eyes um, the physical um, ability teeth and also feet and this is actually one part one major part where we screen um, athletes on local level but also mainly on national level with um, trained clinical directors who are actually uh, doctors and, and nurses in, in practice in, in the different communities. And then also one other really important uh, component from our side is the leadership component. We see this as, as a, in future one of the most important parts to create um, a social um, mind setting and social inclusive mind setting among um, community members, stakeholders, and also organizations to really uh, encourage everyone to include people with intellectual disabilities in their um, daily routines and processes and also in decision-making processes. And therefore, we also have different um, committees and on regional level and also establishing it uh, on national level where people with intellectual disabilities are either on the board or in subcommittee groups where they um, discuss different components and matters um, which are important to them to really align our um, strategies and activities um, across the board. And as um, Alexandra already mentioned as well, the education part, the school platform is a very important one for us where we found that this is one core element uh, in the community where we can really create a sustainable setting for um, inclusive um, communities. And uh, we don't want to neglect as well that um, in several other countries, um, we do see that the, the sports club, the local sports clubs are also very important and especially um, social institutions because we have different countries and different settings uh, across Europe, Eurasia with inclusive school settings, but also segregated, still segregated school systems where we also have to count on other institutions um, to, to bring people with intellectual disabilities into sports. And that's actually where we are also um, tapping in and working closely depending on the context. So um, I would like to, to give later some um, questions uh, around this um, network um, to the group. So 
to just give you a quick update also what we have done over the past year in this really unprecedented time. Um, we, we didn't stop despite the COVID-19 outbreak. We tried everything to align our, our in-person activities to move it either um, to completely virtual meetings or to some kind of hybrid versions. And the next examples just shall give you a, a, um, a glance what we have done. And as already said from Alexandra, we have this really great project, Play Unified, Learn Unified project from Stavros Niakos Foundation. And in this one, we have actually worked um, since February this year on a unified fitness groups in schools pilot project, which has been currently uh, applied, uh, implemented in Russia and Greece. And the idea, the main idea was to keep young people still active, although they cannot train right now in larger groups, because we all know the regulations are medium, smaller groups, reduce um, contacts as much as you can, but we still thought we don't want to lose um, the, the idea of social inclusion in this very uh, important, um, difficult times, because mental health is affecting, uh, is important for everyone. And besides, if you have an intellectual disability or not. And uh, so we were really looking into having fitness groups. And here we have on the left side, some uh, Greek examples where we could uh, still meet in, in a big, bigger group. Um, and now um, we have also moved it again into more virtual um, fitness trainings. And we also have um, great um, resources online and some courses where students with or without intellectual disabilities can watch videos and can, can do the exercises by themselves or together if they have like a small WhatsApp group or Viber group or via Zoom. So these are things we are also encouraging youth to, to take the lead on and, and also to the mentors or um, local teachers um, to, to really um, get people together and still active virtually. And on the right side, we have um, two examples from Russia. Where we also say that, um, that it's not only about the, the, the core sports, the Olympic sports, we also go beyond that, that we say um, also hiking and also maybe some camps or some, some um, Zumba classes are part of the, the social inclusion vision because it brings people together and it, it promotes the, the core uh, unified sports uh, philosophy of having fun and, and a sense of belongingness. So um, this is also a great tool right now to have those small fitness groups where they meet as you see on the right bottom where they did uh, a camp, where they uh, went into the forest and, and did some, um, also some self-experience classes together with people with intellectual disabilities and without. And going a bit broader um, to the more Europe Eurasian context, um, we had a launched um, from September during the European Football Week um, in cooperation with the European Union, we have um, launched our online campaign called Faces of Football, where um, athletes, partners, supporters, coaches could sign up for and made this, um, this um, like a sticker card where they actually wrote down what they, which sport they had done, which, where they are coming from, and also what is their main story. And um, Additionally, they could actually do some exercises on different football um, uh, skills like dribbling and, and shooting, and then also post it uh, in, in, the, in their Facebook channels. And this was also mainly um, supported by the Toyota um, group and uh, the Lions Club International, which is a long lasting partner for Special Olympics in general. And, and we were really delighted to see uh, over 3,000 um, athletes, partners, and coaches engaging and so showing their support uh, on for Special Olympics. <clears throat> uh, 
And looking at um, our online um, youth um, opportunities, we were um, working over the past month as well on, on so-called online youth roundtables, where we are um, since September meeting every month uh, for 45 minutes and talking uh, on different topics. So the first one was broadly on inclusion in sport for youth. And the last one just happened last Wednesday um, was about the power of youth unified sports where we have, uh, we are, where we invited six guest speakers um, who were either uh, along um, a former unified basketball player and now coach or a refugee from uh, Cameroon who actually came to Special Olympics Italy and through unified sports, he got actually more uh, contact, social contact and included into the Italian society. And um, also another one from Greece, Drosos and uh, Agelina, who we've already saw in, in the video. Drosos, he was also a youth leader in athletics. And the, the main idea was here really to, to showcase that youth are taking the lead and sh can share their best practices and also their story to others to really motivate and cultivate as well this peer-to-peer -peer learning despite uh, the, the situation right now. So that's why we moved it to, to a more online uh, format. And the next one is upcoming on the 25th. It will be on um, the importance of health and fitness for um, youth in sport. And this is uh, with our um, sponsor, Kerry Group, where we have um, some, some representative as well, um, talking about nutrition and how important it is to stay active in these times. So um, I'm, I'm happy to share um, to Simon as well the, the registration link. So if you're um, available that time, you're more than welcome. If you bring youth to the table, that would be even more uh, um, uh, great, and uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. And now, uh, one as highlight I mentioned already, Special Olympics Italy, one uh, immediate uh, action was in May this year that um, we all know that Italy had a really, uh, the, the COVID-19 outbreak had a really big impact on the society generally. So Special Olympics uh, Italy came up with uh, so-called smart games where they actually put um, the activities uh, virtually, but they gave assignments to every athlete, partner and coach to participate. And they had a, a specific scoring system to um, different activities they have um, created. And they also supplied some, some equipment to the athletes and partners to really run those activities and it was a great success as you can see a, a small screenshot of a portion of attendance but it was um, really a, a great um, way to keep um, everyone engaged and finally <clears throat> sorry we um, also look into um, Special Olympics Europe uh, sorry Romania where um, we equipped youth with different um, tools and, and uh, balls and also other um, like sanitizers and stuff like this to, to really run during the European Football Week some activities outside in combination with their schools. But um, just recently I talked um, with the national director from Romania because I know that the, the context is also um, how we work with institutions and the, the latest um, project <clears throat> they are um, working with is to equip um, their institutions with TV and um, TVs and also internet connection that they uh, will run in the next few months some virtual um, fitness classes where they have already um, professional um, physiotherapists and fitness coaches already um, creating video content specifically for Special Olympics, which can be uh, viewed on, on the YouTube channel they, they have created. And by that, they actually want to overcome this, um, you know, the disconnection um, of many social institutions, which we, we do face, uh, not only in Romania, but also in other countries that 
some some people with intellectual disabilities are kept right now again in in the institutions closed for several weeks um, in in order to avoid um, to to the COVID nineteen breaks out in this institution but also in the community in the wider sense. So <clears throat> with this initiative, we try to at least get everyone active and connected virtually. And so this is um, a short overview of what we are currently doing. And um, again, I, I, I want to acknowledge Alexandra's and Vasily's work in Greece, um, knowing that they are running into the second quarantine or lockdown. Um, it is so important to have motivated people across all levels and and also focusing on those ones who are really uh, in need but also um, support them and and leverage their uh, ability to do something and if that's a small uh, takeaway from this short webinar today would be really encouraging and investing in youth is very worth um, because we know that they they will keep up the work and then they are way innovative uh, we sometimes think so thank you again and uh, i'm opening the floor now for any questions thank you tobias that was great so should we we'll turn the uh turn the screen share off let's see stop uh, and let's go to the grid view so um Thank you so much, Alexandra, Tobias. That was a great presentation. And all of the materials, uh, I couldn't find the films, Alex, in the, but it might be any problem in my email. But all the materials and links that you've shared, we'll put up with the recording so we can uh, sort that out afterwards. So if there's anything people have missed, um, I think Tobias put a, a good link in the chat. Um, there was one technical question about certification. I'm just going to answer this now and before we get in. Um, actually, we haven't sorted this out, but if you email me, I'll put the email in. We'll sort out anybody who needs a certification for being part of the webinar. We'll sort that out afterwards. So there are a couple of really good questions in the chat. Um, and I just want to pick up the question. You, you dealt a lot with coronavirus in a way in the response, but could I ask the question back to you both in a slightly different way? What are you learning about what's really successful strategies um, in this difficult time? What, what, what are the key things for us all to remember in this rather strange COVID time as we try and get people uh, both included and active? What would you take away Alex or Alex, Alexandra, do you want to start or shall I go? All right. Um, so I think what we found in, in the, the different countries that it went really well that um, Facebook and, and Instagram are, are the core platforms right now, which are working very well to really get um, uh, a good engagement rate and also people active. However, it is really important to to really get a, a we call it a hybrid version or a hybrid activity where you not only get people in front of the laptop or the device it is it has to be connected to any sort of activity they can do in their room or outside and and the simpler it is the better and effective it is because it creates a very quick fun momentum which then also is actually the, the, the aim, we, what we want to bring in, in people's life in, in, a, in a current time. Um, this is, I would say, the one core finding. And, and I, I have the, uh, my opinion is that we, we are in, despite the fact of Corona, um, we are in this luxury position right now that uh, uh, the mass, the majority of society had to deal with any Zoom platform or Microsoft Teams in any sort of, 
of uh, life, like it, would it be work or to meet other people? And I think this is in future will create for us a, a better opportunity to keep people active and also get other athletes who might not have the ability to actually access Zoom because it's still difficult, but they have someone very close to them who are actually um, um, able to, to set it up. This is one, one also one optimistic view on this whole thing, but the other part is definitely that we are facing huge lack of, of hardware. Before you enter the software, you need hardware. So we are definitely lacking on in, in several um, areas, um, on smartphones, on um, PCs who are able to connect. Um, um, so this is um, not, not exceptional for any country or, or explicit for any country. We, I'm, I'm, I'm back in Germany right now and we also face a lot of athletes and partners don't have, or majority athletes haven't any connection to a phone. So we try here as well to go through parents, through mentors who have a good connection to um, partners or athletes in their local community, and then make it, you know, encourage others to really meet with masks or with an, enough space, at least at some, some place where they can connect with one device to, to, to join the activities. That was really helpful and interesting, Tobias. Alexandra, do you have anything to add to that just around COVID? I, I think uh, Toby covered it and said uh, all, everything, but um, it's very important to keep them connected. I found that uh, they really appreciate it not have, being forgotten uh, because they can't go out and they can't practice and they don't really understand, not even children with, without intellectual disability can understand what's happening to the world and why their lives changed. So it was very important that we managed to stay connected in some ways, either in small groups or via Zoom platforms or Facebook, giving them uh, small activities to do challenges and then showing them what everyone else was doing. Thank you. So, and Tim, we're very lucky to be joined by Tim from Starfire Council in Cincinnati. Uh, Starfire Council is a very innovative organization. Its work is very much in the spirit of Day Centers Without Walls, about breaking down walls that divide us. Um, and he's asking a question, maybe you, Tim, you could just speak to the question because I think it's a, it raises this issue of the, the meaning of the work. Would you like to just say the question yourself? Sure. Thank you, Alex and Toby. I thought that was terrific. And thanks for your work. Um, my question was really about if you're noticing, and it looks like there might be some other people here as well from um, various parts of the unified efforts. Are you noticing, is anybody noticing a difference between the relationships that sprout up from unified youth experiences? Um, and, and is that different? Or is there anything that you're noticing uh, versus, say, the unified adult experiences? Does that make sense as a question? Are you noticing the relationships popping up between one or the other? Who would like to respond to that? I can, <laughs> I can go first again. Um, it, uh, what, what has been shown over the past, um, is that this peer-to-peer -peer, um, connection and learning and approach is actually very effective and, and it's really important because people can, and especially youth can relate more to it because it's not someone, you know, um, older and someone age-wise also far away. And that's why we are actually really focusing and, 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 and encouraging all programs to really look into schools and connect schools and, and to really foster this peer-to-peer -peer learning. However, in some cases, you, we don't, especially in club, in sports clubs, we, we cannot, um, and we don't want to actually um, split the, the age groups in the training because it's still something um, we, we want to um, gain out of it. Because if you have an older athlete or an older person in the team, this can be, 
uh, the mentor for others, for younger um, um, athletes and partners to really train them. And, and it's going, also going back to what we said earlier about the leadership component, where we want to give everyone a meaningful role. And, and having this said, this is very much um, on the task for the coaches um, to identify really the, the, the role of everyone in the team to, to, um, you know, to give um, anything back to the team. And not only, yeah, it's nice that you're here, um, you can do sports, but also see what everyone is able to do. And so we, we do encourage the peer-to-peer um, approach and also when we set up competitive teams we are really having strict um, age ranges where they can um, form a team however during the the recreational part or also player development um, model we do see a, a benefit an additional effect of having older players in the team does that kind of explain your your question Sure, yeah, thank you. Alexandra, do you want to add anything to this um, point? I think Toby has more experience in the, this matter, but I, I haven't noticed the team any uh, difference between younger and older participants. I think they all adapt and they're happy to uh, take part and they're creative when given the opportunity my opinion. So I have a question then about, so when looking at the statistics, uh, Tobias, obviously this, there's this initiative, um, there's some funding behind the initiative, the Special Olympics program is um, embraced this as an exciting opportunity to advance inclusion. You're testing this in uh, three countries. What what do you think is the future um, really for making this sustainable um, and breaking down the barriers that still exist across society and some of the some of the little kind of strange barriers we almost create in our minds around um, what we can do together as human beings how do you see this evolving now yeah that that's a great question thank you um, so we we did showed you today the, the core element of this project, which is unified sports in schools. But it entails more than, than only being in the sports field. And so we do see um, the inclusive setting and network is really important. And therefore, um, Greece and Special Olympics Hellas has done a great job and as well, Special Olympics Russia and Serbia where they have actually connected through the last two and a half years with local community leaders, with uh, also um, national uh, and regional government, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Sports, to situate, to place the, the project and its content on, um, on a higher level, and also with signed agreement letters to ensure that um, these schools are eligible to run the project and that also Special Olympics is eligible to do that. And also with um, not every time with um, cash fu um, funding, but also in a value in kind where um, the local community or municipality or regional government is actually supplying um, the the um, infrastructure and also um, the venues to be um, used for free of charge. So this is this is the second pillar, let me say, um, of this project where we really, the project teams and we looked as a team into it and, and try to get the sustainable component in it. And uh, other than that, we also worked on, on uh, the external communication a lot to, to promote the project and also to raise awareness in a broader community sense to really um, make um, great awareness of this project and what we are doing. And, and we are also happy that um, in the next few months, we uh, can uh, set up some communal space 
um, or equip community uh, playgrounds um, with some equipment in Greece where we really strived out from the school setting into the community. So we are getting out of the, the school setting in a way to really um, spread the message in the community. And with that, with knowing that the funding is, is limited, um, we, we try to really set our stone here and, 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 and get at least the, the youth keeping up uh, the, the actions in their community. Do you think this is going to change uh, the Special Olympics as a whole movement? It seems like you're almost potentially flipping. I mean, I'm excluded from the Olympics because I'm short and not very fast. <laughs> so are you opening up the Olympics to all of us through inclusion? Is that part of the vision? That's of course, that's something. Um, uh, I'm, I'm also, Simon, we're on the same page. I'm also quite short and I, I played volleyball when I was younger. And, and that was actually my tapping into. So I was a unified partner for, uh, I think, seven years. And, and this is definitely one core element of it, that we, we give people with any ability level the opportunity to join and then match this with someone else who has, yes, maybe a, an intellectual disability, but that doesn't say that this person doesn't have a, a, a greater or better a, a physical or sport ability. And so with that, um, yes, we do um, open up um, the, the, the Olympics for others and uh, creating this opportunity on a local level, but also up to international levels where we have our world games. So do you think that the Special Olympics movement is looking at this work and thinking of it as the a learning for the whole global movement? Yeah, so the, the ultimate vision is still a social inclusion world and an inclusive settings and so one part is sports but it doesn't end there this is also what we showed earlier it's it's going further we want to encourage other organizations as well to think on on getting others with intellectual disabilities or with other disabilities on board to really um, have a unified leadership uh, on on several levels and with that making your decisions as well diverse diversify and also really target oriented and what is the need and so this is definitely something our, our vision um, to create a unified generation and that's why we are also looking into youth younger generations right now because they will be the future um, of our movement and of the future societies fantastic 